hi guys, Arfali here. I just wanted to give you guys a room tour. I've never at all done a video room tour, scrap room, craft room tour. So I wanted to do that today because I have uploaded pictures of my craft room on my blog and it's a little bit easier to do in a video. Okay, so we'll start here with the back of the door. So this is um, a room, it's 13 by 19. And I used this used to be the playroom for like 11 years. I waited till the kids were old enough. The youngest who's doing camera, <laughs> I waited till the youngest was in high school to get my craft room till they were done with playing with the toys. So um, I have all my punches on these little organizers, the clear shoe organizers. So these are punches, and see you can still see some little Barbie doll bits from the playroom. <laughs> But I tried to keep like shapes, like these are circles and squares, and then it goes to stars. And then I have some yarn here. We're just going to work our way around the room this way. So then this closet I use as my stamping closet. And then this room had two closets in it. It was all full of toys. So this one is my mess making closet. So I tried to keep all anything that would make a mess. It goes in here because I have my Ranger Craft mat. <laughs> and then we've got all the Distress Reinkers. I've got various and a sundry different kinds of inks. I've got the Distress inks, all my Ranger Distress inks. I have Hero, Hero Arts inks. I have any kind of artist, like I have light modeling paste, Liquitex heavy gloss gel. So anything that's going to make a mess I try to keep in this, in this area. I also, this was a little cafe rod that held some curtains when it was the playroom, so I just repurposed it, and I have my water bottle for misting, like when, for when you use distress inks and things like that. And then this is just storage that I need to finish working on. <laughs> so there's that, and oh, the stamps I have organized, they're cataloged, so you'll see there's numbers on here. So those are catalogs so that I know I can just look through my stamp index in order to find stamps. Um, the reason I have this Rascog cart here is this is my mixed media cart and I have all my watercolors on the top of my watercolor brushes and then I use, reuse the pet food containers as my water bowls. So those are here and I have sponges, craft sticks, anything that has to do with mixed media goes on this cart so that I can roll it around because I can roll it over to the Heidi Swap mat. And then I made um, templates I made stencils out of clear transparency film and then I labeled those. So anything like art journaling is all in this area. <laughs> okay. We didn't see You can that. just cut that off. <laughs> yeah. So to the left of the stamping closet on the wall I have this organizer for more of my distress stamp distress stains, paints, and re-inkers for the close to my heart ink pads that are stored on the wall there. And then this is my Cricut cabinet and the cartridges are below it. And over here in this basket my hot tools are in there so the fuse, the heat embossing gun, the hot glue gun, and the pebbles ribbon iron are in there. I have some paints and most used like mixed media items because it's close to the mixed media cart. And then I have my Nina Solar White and cardstock that I keep um, overflow from the printing station. And then to the left of this is the die cutting closet. So that's all my Sizzix. Everything that's in the die cutting closet is for like cutting. So I have baskets labeled with extra repurposed chipboard like from cereal boxes and things like that. And then I have hanging on the wall on a magnetic organizer are my Spellbinders dies, Nestabilities dies, and then I have my Sizzix machine and the Epic 6 is for letterpress. So in these drawers I have things that I can letterpress. I have things that I can cut. There's sheets of wood veneer. There's sheets of wood veneer. There's uh, paperboard, Tim Holtz grunge board. There is a Zutter cutting machine for when I teach classes that I can do bulk. Say like I need tons of 3x4 cards, I can just do those in bulk so it's a lot quicker. So these two rolling carts that I got at Michael's house 
my mink machine's right on top of here. So the one on the right holds more planner supplies because it's close to the planning station. Um, my mink machine is behind the chair. I don't know if you can see it there. And then the drawers on the left all house the mink supplies. Like I've got the pre-printed, um, I've got toner sheets, mink tags, the rolls of foil. And then this chair, this is where I sit to do the planning. So I have my planners there. And then planner supplies are in the station right next to it because we learned in design school that you need to keep so you're not walking all over your room you need to keep things stored in the place at the point of use so then as we move around I have pegboard with more planner supplies there okay above the planning station is my six foot pegboard wall that I had I have a detailed blog post on, on a tutorial on this as well so this is on the wall holding my planner pens above it. I've got more Heidi Swap memory supplies, um, journals, the design triangles, and then most of this on the left side is all American crafts. I've got more Project Life, new paper pads. I have the Every A Day edition I just ordered from Project Life. Let me zoom in a little bit. And then to the left of that, we have my printer. So there's my printer and this is where I sit to do the blog and edit my photos in Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop. And that is a quilt that my mom made. It's a wall quilt. I really love that. And then my sister made the mixed media artwork above that. And then behind... Here, let me scoot over. Okay, so I showed you my printer and below the printer here there's printer ink and printer paper. I store that right below the printer. And then there's some design team binders. Uh, I have these folders, folders right here, the file folders, hold like Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Photoshop, any kind of tutorials that I need to remember how to do anything. I print that and I store those in those folders and they're, they're all labeled. Let me see if I can zoom in for you guys. There you go. So there you can see I have those labeled file folders. I have my speed light for the top of my uh, camera. And then you can see there where I blog and my Project Live Station is above that. And I have Studio Calico embellishments in those Craftmates organizers with this secure top. So that if I happen to drop it, which I'm pretty klutzy, so I probably would, if I drop those containers, it's not going to pop open because they have a secure top. Then I have punches that I use often for Project Life and a pair of scissors. At each station, I try to also have a pair of scissors. And then I have this write-on wipe-off board, a whiteboard, so that I can keep my design team assignments in clear view. And then to the left, I have my silhouette machine. And then my sewing machine is behind the computer back there, but I just move the computer over and slide it out. And then these, let me see, these cabinets right here hold more sewing supplies, needles, thread, any kind of thing like that that has to do with sewing, so it's close to the sewing machine. And then as you work your way over, I have more Project Life pocket page protectors, and there's more Project Life supplies there. I have the plain grid, the journaling line, the white cards, and then I have more Studio Calico Project Life kits that I need to use, so those are out so I can see them. And above that, I went to Utah to meet Heidi Swap, and I bought her that Create sign on the wall. I bought that at her booth at the Swiss Days in Utah. And I also got the word Shine, so I need to paint that, but I painted it the Robin's Egg or the Tiffany Blue to match my room. There you go, that's a little bit better. So then to the left of that, I have thickers. Thickers in this little organizer here. And then I have a dress form, and at the top I have some mini albums. So I'll scoot over there so you guys can see that better. There we go. So hanging at the top of that dress form, there's some different little mini albums 
that I like to have out on display. And you can see the thickers better now that I zoomed in a little bit. I, I use the clothespins to kind of combine the different colors. So I have gold with a clothespin. Probably can't read it from here. Let me see. Okay, that's a little bit better. So I have gold there with a clothespin. I have white and black. And then I have some Project Life stickers. And those little white cards right there on a close with a clothespin. Let me see if I can point to them. Uh, no, I can't. Okay, there we go. That right there, I just have some little white cards with different photo sizes. So if I have a layout and I don't know what fo size photo I want to use, I can just place those different size papers and then that helps me decide without printing and thinking, oh, I, I should have cut this down. So it kind of saves printer ink. So then here I have some more Studio Calico and behind that is a Project Life themed kit box. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Yeah, that little brown basket there has Project Life theme kits. Okay, so here I have binders. And these are different card classes that you can see. It says online card classes, my stamp index. Um, I have page maps, sketches, and an inventory binder so I can try to keep track of my purchases and not repurchase the same item that I already have. So that's kind of organizing for the scrap room all in separate binders. I have more Project Life page protectors down here. And then that cabinet houses the more thickers, but these are the ones like basics that I can sort by color. Not the ones I don't use as often. And then below that is more cardstock for making cards. And then you come to the Project Life bookcase, which if you look at the photos I'm going to include, you can see that. Okay, so to the left of the window, this is where I keep all my Project Life albums, and I purchased all of these when they're at least 40 or 50% off, and I also use my 10% or 20% off customer appreciation coupons as well. So I go ahead and stock up on those. I have the current Project Life albums for 2015 are the gray and then the 2014 that I'm finishing up. Well I did most of 2014. That's in the yellow striped albums. And then I have Project Life core kits. More Project Life. I have the new Heidi Swap Prismatic and Picturesque and then some inspiration and sketchbooks and my American Crafts. I use lots of American Crafts white cardstock so I have 8 and a half by 11 and 12 by 12 there. I have more pocket page protectors by Project Life. And then you get to this side of the room which is the large bookcases on the left. So this is Rainbow Order sorted cardstock. And this whole bookcase is embellishment sorted by manufacturer. So I can, the thinking behind the chair in front of the bookcase is that I can sit there, grab an inspiration book, sort through some, I used to have magazines there, so I do have some magazines. And I can sit there and just kind of think about what kind of layout I want to make next. So then on top of this is an old entryway bench. At the bottom this is an old entryway bench and I used it to store my texture cardstock sorted by color. And then this is also cardstock sorted by color. And on top of this I have mini albums that I've created and pictures of my kids. Let me zoom back a little bit. Oh, I can't. Okay, then you get to this bookcase and this bookcase holds Pattern paper sorted by manufacturer, so my favorite manufacturers I have here. Okay, so in these iris boxes I got on sale, I have American Crafts, I have Amy Tangerine, Heidi Swap, and American Crafts, Maggie Holmes, and then I have American Crafts Chamel there. And these are some older kits that I need to use, but they're still organized by month, so that's why I keep them in there. rolling cart that I pulled out in between the desktop and the next book, Project Life bookcase. I have this, these Project Life core kits. I have six core kits divided in this rolling cart from Michaels. I'll zoom out just a tiny bit. Well first let me show you. I have a detailed blog post on this, how I divided the kits, but I also label them by, I have them by color so it's aqua and each 
it says aqua a bunch of different times because I divided it by kit so that I would know like this section is from the aqua kit this section is from Heidi Swap Dreamy so they're all labeled so I still know which kit they came from but they're also organized by color okay so that's a rolling card that I can move over the sorted by color project life cards and then at the bottom of that yeah, there you can see it is Studio Calico Kits. I got the card kit and the Project Life kit for the last two or three years. So I sorted those. If I didn't use them in the month, I sort them but in rainbow order by color. So that I, if I'm searching for a pink card and I want Studio Calico, I can just go look in the pink section. So it's a little, because mostly I design by color. Then you move to the left in this standing height craft table here. I built this with raw bir three quarter inch birch plywood and I have a detailed blog post on this as well. It's a standing height craft desk and it's four feet wide by six feet long which allows 48 inches around the entire circumference of it so the there's enough room for traffic flow. And the bases are from Walmart. I'll try to show you the bases. There we go. And they have industrial strength wheels. It's the Better Homes and Gardens line and it's really super thick. Kind of it's supposed to resemble a West Elm. It's really thick, dark, ebony colored wood. So here you can see my craft desk. Um, I use this for assembling layouts and then I have a lot of my most used stamps on the top. And any of you guys who know me on Faith, Hope, and Washi Facebook group, um, this was kind of a therapy. I We had some a grief situation in our family so this was kind of therapy building this it was you know sanding it and staining it by hand and hand rubbing it it was um, it took a lot of time but it also saved me a lot of money because the standing height version of this from Pottery Barn was about $1,200 so this one cost me less than 50 so it was good to do that it felt good to make that for myself and then on top of this are my most used stamps um, a current kit that I'm working with my spinning tool organizer here my friends got me this pampered chef spinning tool organizer and I just added some paper to coordinate with my room and then my pink ATG with archival tape is there I try to have a couple different paper cutters on each side so on that side I have my uh, Tiffany blue American Crafts cutter and then on this side I have another cutter and I have some stamping cleaner and another ATG gun over there and then this organizer right there I'll try to zoom in that's the Harbor Freight one a lot of different people got that one there you go so that's the Harbor Freight and I put that together myself it was a bear to put together but <laughs> Anyway, it's done. And so at the top are mists sorted by color, and then there's Baker, Baker's Twine. The different sections in this are great for how for sorting things by color. And then I have the bottom two are washi tape. And there you can see my ATG gun. And those are some layouts I just created on Saturday. So here's a close-up a little bit better. You can see I have an old flower pot, so a lot of times I repurpose things from other parts of the house. I have an old flower pot here that holds all my paint brushes. And then this furniture on this side of the room, that those cubes are from Michael's. And then these bookcases, those were from another room of the house as well. And I just repainted those. I primed them and painted those. And antique white that I had color matched to match the furniture on the other side of the room. So at the base of the craft table, I wanted to show you, it fits the 14 inch Itzo bins from Target. So you can fit 12 by 12 paper in here. So I have stamps, and then this is current kits that I'm currently working on. I'm on the Click Kits design team, so I have labeled Click Kits um, kits in here. And these are the, like the Studio Calico kits come in now, these are the container store. My friend Alex Hunter, she told me that these are available at the container store so these are the bags let me zoom in and see if you guys can see that yeah there you go so those are the bags like and I store my different kits I have a studio calico kits some kits I got on sale um, anything I want to keep separate and in its own bag so I can keep all the embellishments and everything together so nothing gets lost because you if you're using it for the design team you have to make sure you keep that all separate 
And then there are some more stamps. These would be current stamps that I use for Project Life. Those are from Studio Calico, the Project Life kits. Those are there. And then these stamps are separated by, I have paper tray ink, and if I, if I have a die and stamp combo, so there's a die to match the stamp, those are in different little binder packages from Staples in there as well. Okay, so on this side of the craft desk, I've just walked around so you guys didn't have to get all shaky there. I just walked around and started filming on this side. I have current albums from Project Life that I'm working on, past albums. There's a 2008, 2011, 2012, more Project Life albums that I got on sale, more pro pocket page protectors from Project Life. And then my sister got this. I got lots of stuff as gifts in this room. So my sister had got me all these Amy Butler fabric uh, totes, and I love those. I use one in the mixed media cart. I use one here for extra Project Life supplies. And then that label there says adhesive. So that whole basket is adhesive that I've stocked up on when it's on sale or clearance. So thank you for joining me. Bye!